kids, right? Well, believe me, it's Every morning when you wake up, you are living moments you will never get back. You're breathing air you'll never breathe again. Time is our most precious commodity. And what we do with it is everything. It is your one opportunity to embrace the best gift you will ever receive. And every second sees a little more slip away. We have this mentality that the future is going to somehow mean more than the present. The time tomorrow will mean more than time today's today. speaker is more the best motivation in life and the being saved for some other so time. But yoga. the reality is we I'm don't get any yoga. younger. Why wouldn't you allocate your time, your effort to the things that make you feel like today is powerful? You are the gatekeeper. You decide whether you want to take this gift and use it wisely or allow it to slip away. Money you can get back. Possessions can be reacquired. But the minutes in your life, well, they're finite. Today shouldn't be looked at as a bridge to tomorrow, but a once in a lifetime opportunity. You are nothing more and nothing less than what you do with the time you have. And if you know that, if you live like you are on top of the world, it will be more than enough. fire doesn't just appear. It isn't born out of thin air or imagined into reality. It begins with a spark, a belief. The notion that something can be accomplished long before it begins to materialize. Belief is looking at the pieces around you and understanding that in one way or another, They'll all come together to create the outcome that you want. It's the backbone of any pursuit because you're taking the unknown and you are knocking it down a peg. Standing up to the fears, the doubts, the demons in your head. When we fail, it's because we believe that our obstacles are bigger than us. We succumb to that reality. But when one understands that belief, the very same thought process that can be our greatest detriment, is also our greatest asset, we become limitless. If you know you're going to cross a finish line, if you're certain, if you can already see it, everything else becomes trivial. Nothing is debilitating, nothing is game ending because you'll get around it you know who you are you know where you should be that is the most challenging part once you're certain of that it's simply a matter of putting one foot in front of the other we live in a world of self-induced limitations we define our best. We define good versus great, possible versus impossible, acceptable versus insufficient. And these limitations guide our behavior. We live by them. Our understanding of limits paves the way for our reality. Once we define something as our best, it becomes our summit. Once we label it as crazy or, or far-fetched, we turn our backs on it. But here's a beautiful truth. There are no limits in everyday life unless you place them there. You don't have a true personal best because you can always be better. 
There is one way or another a route to achieve anything you deem worthy of achieving. The key is not seeking to define excellence, but to be continuously seeking progress. With that mentality, you'll see that there is always a next level, and it's always within reach. It's been said that nothing is achieved without consistency. Short blasts of intensity are great. But what end up defining us in the long run are the things that we do day in and day out. These things become our habits, routines, and ultimately shape the people we become. A lot of attention is given to the home run, obtaining that monumental result without understanding that the big things are simply comprised of smaller components. Little pieces of paper that stack up every day, bricks that are laid down one by one. You can't see greatness happen because it's not instantaneous. It's not done in a weekend. But it is present, and it's present every single day. A building we walk by is comprised of thousands of individual parts. An all-star that knocks down a three-pointer has taken that shot hundreds of thousands of times a ceo has studied his or her particular field to an extent most people couldn't even comprehend people don't see consistency they see the outcome of that consistency and while there's nothing technically wrong with that it's only part of the equation and that's my message today these accomplishments just like any others they take effort distributed and routinely implemented every single day and this consistency is what gets you the larger than life result it's what constructs your victory not once in a while or when it's convenient but making incremental manageable progress every day and these days become the foundation that you stand on one is not worth more than another to get the big result, every single small step is imperative. Every move forward is your home run. People ask me every day, what do I do to look the way that I do? When I tell them it's 99% diet, they usually give me some kind of weird look, and they say, oh great, it's another one of these guys. In a limitless world, why set your sights on the obtainable? The prize within an arm's reach. Why not think bigger? Our expectations are the foundation for our accomplishments. The target you aim for is more than likely going to be the target you hit. Which means it's quite possible to do exactly what you set out to do and still drastically underachieve for the sole reason that you are worth more. You are capable of more than you give yourself credit for, but like anything, if you don't recognize and do something about it, the impact will be minimal. It doesn't matter that you're the fastest person in the world if you never sprint. It's impossible to stumble into excellence. Because to get there, you need to one, understand that something greater exists, and two, understand that you are worthy of it. In anything you do, it's better to aim high to try and accomplish too much. Be bigger than reality, larger than life. And what you'll find in maintaining these monumental expectations is that you grow along with them. You realize that what was acceptable yesterday is no longer good enough, that it was merely a stepping stone. The things you're capable of, the life that's possible for you is unfathomable to the human mind. Endless opportunities are not black and white. 
They're not reassuring because they haven't happened yet. They're not visible or tangible, but that's okay. Just know that no matter where you are or what you want, more exists. If you're willing to go to another level, there is something bigger, period. So take a look at the targets that you've set. Don't waste time asking yourself whether there's something greater there is. Ask yourself if you're willing to step up, to move outside your comfort zone, and get it. How many revolutionary ideas were never brought into existence? How many dreams were discarded and deemed impossible before they even had a chance? It's a question we'll never know the answer to because there never was a beginning. There never was a start. Anyone can dream and everyone does. And these dreams they're the seeds that quite literally change the world. But the hardest part is the decision to begin. To transform something from an idea in your head into a reality that you can live every day. To push fear, uncertainty aside. Maybe you don't even know how to approach your goal. But I'll tell you what. Trying a million times and figuring it out on attempt one million and one will always be better than letting that dream die. See, action, movement has a way of sorting things out. There's always a way to succeed, but the wheels need to hit the pavement. It's awkward. It's uncomfortable. It's a vulnerable feeling, putting your time and energy into something you're unsure of. But simply starting allows a spectacular process to take shape. Beginning is only the hardest part because of the mental barriers that attempt to safeguard you from every single thing that can go wrong. But don't think about what can go wrong. Focus on what will go right. All the incredible change that will come your way if you just start. any secret that life doesn't always go the way we drew it up. It's great to have a game plan, but it's just as important to be practical with regard to life's ups and downs. Success lies not in the ability to get everything right the first time, but to adjust. We can't afford to be one-dimensional with our pursuits because the second things go wrong, we panic. We go into emergency mode. Life only begins to make sense when we learn to expect those twists and turns. Teach ourselves to adapt, move forward despite their occurrence. This brings to light a very important truth. It is not the road ahead that determines your fate. It's the way you internalize the process. It's having the patience and the confidence to take life as it comes and mold it in a way that gets you to your goals. As long as your wheels don't stop turning, you are never stuck. As long as you are willing to adjust, there will never be an end in sight until you put the stake in the ground and declare victory. prices, mass shortages. What's next? Hi, I'm Chris Hurt here, and if you're like... Control is responsibility. It's being in the driver's seat and knowing that the result you get is directly correlated with you and your decisions. 
See, it's easy to point the blame. It's easy to be helpless and play the victim, but the empowered embrace the fundamental truth. That when you take control of your life, you own its outcome. Now, this isn't always easy because it means confronting the difficult things in your life. Taking the necessary road, not necessarily the easy one. But when you decide that you are the author, that you hold a pen, you dictate your story. There's no reason to exhaust time and energy on how unfair life can be. Life isn't fair. We all know that, but it's not supposed to be. Winners win because they find ways to take their situation and transform it into a resolve that they want. Not look at the world around them as an external force pushing them down, but as everything they could ever need to build upon. You have control. Whatever comes your way is working for you. It's allowing you to grow, providing the pieces for you to create your own narrative. The key is not to deflect out, but to reflect in, to take control of your life and get what you want. There are 253 of you here, and I only see one or two commenters. What is what happens when preparation Do meets hard work? Do you like yoga? Do you like morning motivation? Seneca. Because I'm here every day at 8. Tap the screen to show your support. How many times have you heard luck used as the explanation for events that have unfolded? Successful people or fortunate occurrences, they're deemed lucky. Negative, unfortunate situations, well, they're unlucky. But what if luck had very little to do with anything? What if the events in your life were the result of both the way you look at the world and the way you prepare um, yourself for what comes your way? Nothing better than a flexible woman. I actually have to say, there is nothing better than someone who goes to and buys a on the concept of luck is Biden. to relinquish control over your life, to reallocate power. It does nothing for you except deceive and manipulate. The truth is, great situations are going to arise as well as challenging times. What will matter in either is how you handle them. When opportunities come your way, do you capitalize? Are you ready? Can you make the most of what's been presented to you? And on the other hand, when the negative arises, can you see it for what it is? A temporary obstacle that you can and will get past. I think the man who buys up my shop or his woman is going to be the about what's best happening person around you. who's watching this live. Because what's happening around you is like so fix your job to deal with it, to play your saying. hand and live out every day like it's a gift. The ones who are prepared, positive, ambitious, by their very nature, they will achieve. And when they do, they'll be called lucky by passers-by. But don't allow yourself to fall for this. Luck is not given. It is never given. Luck is made. Every single day. delicate balance that occurs when moving toward a goal and we need to be thinking about the possibilities the future what can be goals are impactful because you're creating something meaningful in a place where it doesn't yet exist but that's also what makes the journey so difficult because it means there's going to be a substantial stretch of time where you wake up and haven't yet accomplished your primary objective. That's a lot of mornings. Working toward a dream, holding okay, on to hope this is and a hard trust, position to hold, to and I don't top, see anybody giving me any support. Whatever is in the future. Heart this if you are here. And while tomorrow may contain the treasure we so desperately seek, let us not forget about the many steps 
that occurred before today. About the persistence, the courage, the self-belief. You would not be standing where you are right now without the platform that you've built over time. And that's an accomplishment that should never be overlooked. When eyes are only focused on what you've yet to acquire, on what you haven't created, you're minimizing your own momentum. Look, mindset is the beginning and the end of every endeavor. If you feel like a winner, you will win somehow, some way. So just as important as building and working toward the next milestone is recognizing and feeling good about the milestones of yesterday. These small victories have become ingrained into who you are. They have built you up and will continue to push you to greater things. Well, I guess she'll just they have to watch to find out, huh? Your reassurance that you'll find a way. That is what your identity. Not if I'm good. Accomplishments are So tap the screen. If it falls out, then you have a good forward laugh. progress where you need to go and of earned confidence comprised of the many steps that got you to where you are now. So don't forget every once in a while to look back. that we need to go so often met with apprehension why is our fear of the unknown greater than our fear of settling for unhappiness or the status quo when you look at this through a lens of rationality it makes very little sense you know human beings like what is known what is certain even if it's at the expense of something better and that mentality is what breeds mediocrity and creates a life of simply getting by. See, by refusing to take risks, you are essentially risking it all because you are creating regret. And regret is the monster in the closet. Regret is the danger worth fearing. That someday you'll look back and wish that you'd live life on your own terms. That you'd been a little braver, a tad more adventurous. Truth be told, this world is just not as scary as we make it out to be. But the trick isn't knowing that. The trick is doing something about it. Convincing your brain that everything will be okay. Otherwise, we spend our entire lives standing behind the curtain that separates us from the stage. Why? Because the lights might be a tad too bright? I don't know about you, but that sure as hell beats a life in the dark. The risks you take are directly correlated to your happiness, your progress, fulfillment, success. These things can't exist without some element of trust that everything will be okay. That the road you don't know can take you wherever you want it to. In today's world, things come quickly. Information is instantaneous. Consumer goods are shipped to us at the click of a button. We want now, and we get now. And in many ways, that's great. It's vastly improved our lives. But the danger is when that immediate satisfaction or validation is applied to our own goals. When that thinking translates into impatience with your journey or your progress. Whatever your dream is, whatever you're working toward, it can't be bought with one click on Amazon. Right? The good stuff, the important things, they take time. A million little wins, ups, downs, failures, successes, all jumbled into what will eventually be the mountain you stand on. But how you visualize that mountain is crucial. People quit not because something is beyond their capability. They quit because they lose sight of the simple truth that winning takes time, that getting to your finish line requires patience. And if it didn't, I can tell you right now, it would not have the same value, it would not be so highly regarded. 
the things you want most are earned, and they're earned step by step, day by day. Have the patience to see that through. There's a difference between going through the motions and standing out. One requires action, the other calls for meaningful action, and the difference is tremendous. The passion that drives you determines whether you make an impact or clap as someone else does. Passion is an army. It protects you from a world rampant with negativity. It pushes you forward when you're tired, when you're weak. The difference between victory and every other outcome is a desire that lives much deeper than what's shown on the surface. It's what creates curiosity. It's what makes you jump out of bed. It makes the hours and hours of focus and work all worth it. When you love something, boundaries mean very little. There's always more to see. There's more to discover. Settling isn't an option. Quitting isn't entertained because it means you'd be walking away from the good stuff. What's around the corner? Which for some may be an option, but not for the passionate, not for those who need it like oxygen. If greatness is the goal, passion is not a luxury. It is a requirement. It's your ticket past the detours and roadblocks that send most people in the other direction. Being great means standing out, and standing out requires a burning desire to reach the top. It's your spark and your momentum, the wind on your back. If you are passionate about the road ahead, the twists and turns are part of the equation. In fact, you live for those very ups and downs because nothing is going to stop you from the journey and wherever it may lead. Sometimes our greatest gains are the result of our greatest losses. The losses that at the time shake up our world, they catch us off guard and even devastate us. It can be incredibly tough in the midst of misfortune to remind ourselves that when one door closes, another opens. That when one journey ends, another begins. But change pushes us. It requires, it mandates that we grow rise to the events occurring around us. A loss will always remind us of what we once had, how things used to be. But what we sometimes fail to see is the beauty and significance of the chapter. And that without it, the book wouldn't be complete. We needed the lessons learned. Those people in our lives, those moments of joy, sadness, they're what positioned us to move forward. Loss is no tragedy, any more than the sun setting at dusk. It encapsulates everything good in our lives while simultaneously waving us on to tomorrow's sunrise. is a decision. Failure is a decision. Winning, losing, mediocrity, these are decisions that we make. None of them can exist in your life without a green light given by you. They require your approval. 
Now, this isn't to say outside circumstances don't play a part. Right? Of course they do. But they're merely pieces. It's up to you to look at what's in front of you, the good and the bad, and put it all together to tell the story that you want to tell. See, failure is a decision because it's a stopping point. Failure doesn't mean that you stumbled or made a mistake or had to pick your pride up off the floor. No, failure means that you stopped. You decided that for one reason or another, moving forward simply isn't worth it. That the tough moments outweigh the great ones, and so you decided to settle. But the reality is everyone deals with hardship. The differentiator is that some people decide to let it consume them and keep them down, while others decide that the unfortunate events will be nothing more than speed bumps on their way to greatness. It doesn't matter what stands before them because they've already chosen excellence. They've chosen to take the negative and turn it into the necessary ingredients to move forward. And that's one of the greatest decisions that one can make, simply to move on, to find a way. Because if you're willing to persist, there will be no end points. Only new opportunities. anything with a good night's sleep and over 1 million dreamers have trusted city furniture to help starting with a comfort defining test rest our sleep experts will find your best mattress perfectly matched to your budget and your sleep needs and from queen mattresses starting at 129 to a $300 gift card with Tempur-Pedic you can rest assured that we have the best price guaranteed so everyone can live like this When the ground beneath us shakes, we crave stability. When the heavens open up and rain pours down, we run for shelter. When life presents us with vagueness, with flashes of possibility, we long for mastery. It's more instinct than anything else. But could it be that that instinct that we run to like moths to a flame is leading us astray, that it doesn't have our best interests at heart? Could it be that we're so worried about protecting and maintaining an acceptable image for the world that we forget to build something internally that's worth protecting? What if that shaking is what brings down the foundations that held us back? What if that rain washes away the limits of yesterday as we evolve into something more? And what if those flashes of possibility require of us not mastery, no, not yet, but a willingness to be the fool? And what if that willingness isn't an unfortunate dead end, but a beginning? In one of his lectures, at the University of Toronto, Jordan Peterson said, if you are not willing okay. to be a fool, you can't so be a master. So we've done 30 minutes of yoga this morning. In the site. Um, we were listening to a motivational video comp compilation on YouTube. Um, I'm doing this thing where I'm trying to give everybody morning motivation. That way um, you guys can start your day right. I'm doing yoga every morning at 8 a.m. as a form of self-discipline and consistency for myself. Um, I've been doing it every day um, since the last day of, of September, so I've been sticking to it every day. I'm pretty proud of myself. I mean, I knew I could do it, but it's just a different thing when you actually do it. So 
Um, I felt like today's motivational speech was about not being afraid to get started wherever you are. Um, I certainly don't know how to do yoga very well. I'm not a yoga instructor. I'm not certified at all, so I could probably hurt my knee <laughs> or something if I'm not careful. But anyway, um, I do research um, some poses if I feel uncomfortable in one. So I have learned a little bit about protecting my knees over this course of um, doing the yoga in the mornings. I'm calling it stretching and breathing because that's what I'm doing. You guys can call it yoga. but. Um, I'm just stretching and breathing over here and trying to protect my knees. I'm Megan of Megan's Plant Boutique and I'm trying to have Megan knees all my life. <laughs> knees like me. <laughs> so anywho, um, yeah, it's spooky season so I thought I'd bust out my spooky season shirt. And so um, yeah, that's what we're doing today. Um, I hope you enjoyed yoga this morning. I do it every day at eight. Um, I, when I first started this, there were a lot of poses that I couldn't do. And there's one that's really tough, like when I'm up on my shoulders, my feet in the air, and I come down, um, and I lower my whole body down. And when I do that, it like, takes so much core strength that I used to just write down real quick. But now it's just like a quick little, like it's like a feather fall, and I feel so good about it. Um, that one pose that I can do now. So um, I'm pretty thrilled at my progress. So um, I thought what was pretty awesome is this speech was about getting started, the motivational speech that I saw. Um, can we do some leg stretch? T-S-T-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R. You're too light. You come in at eight if you wanna see me stretch. I do yoga at eight, probably eight to 8.30. Um, I talk to you guys for about half an hour about my business, Megan's Plant Boutique. Um, that is um, mine, I made it. And um, it's a website that I own. It's megansplantboutique.com. I am an Etsy seller, I sell plants. So I um, am selling this gorgeous Berry Illusion Syngonium. You'll see this as well as several others that are much more mature. And I also have pink Syngoniums, Neon Robustas. Um, those are arrowhead plants. So yeah, I do yoga every day at 8 a.m. and it is for motivation every for <laughs> me and it's for um, motivation for everyone else. My whole goal is to hope that other people like get started on these things that are daunting to them. Like I needed a place to outlet my my I struggle with like slowing down my thoughts. I have a have a hard time with prioritizing what's the most important thing to do. So yoga actually helps me slow down and think about it without thinking about it at the time. So Yoga is definitely something that has, or stretching and breathing rather, because that's what I'm doing, <laughs> has some, um, definitely slowed me down a bit so that I can focus on important on what's really important. Um, so do you all want to see the cage? Okay, so the cage is the kitty condo that I have repurposed from uh, after hurricane season. Um, and there are a bunch of plants propagating in there right now. So at the bottom, I have a bunch of syngoniums. Up in the middle shelf, I have a bunch of propagations going. These are fresh cuts. Mm, up here are like, syng not syngoniums, like succulents, because that's a really high layer right close to that light. And then the top layer is a mix of succulents. Excuse me, I feel like I have the hiccups. And I have a princess fairy castle up there. I have some waffle plants. I have some syngonium. I might take you a little closer. You guys want to get a little closer to the cage? You all want to see the cage? If you want to see the cage, tap that screen. If not, I'm just going to stay right here <laughs> um, and show you my very illusion. So um, if you guys want to see the cage and what's in there, I will get closer. Just show you that you want to see it. Tap the screen a bunch of times and I'll see those hearts and then I will know. Oh, okay. So you guys want to see this cage. You want to see the cage? How bad? How bad do you want to see the cage? Okay. We'll go closer. Okay, so we're gonna take the light away. Oh, we are detached. Okay, so this is the cage. Uh, we are working on it daily. It's one of those things that is a work in progress all the time. I've rearranged them a lot. Um, I just got this second light in here at the bottom and I added an additional light up here. So I'm excited about this. I still have a couple more lights that I wanna put up. Oh, thank you all for smashing that love button. Um, I love plants and you'll see some of these um, in my shop, megansplantboutique.com. And you'll see some of them on my TikToks because I don't sell them all. I save some of them for myself in my personal collection, I know. 
but um, I am working on Bold Illusions. I don't know if you guys have seen Bold Illusions. I'm gonna pull this one. This is a Bold Illusion, and this one is my baby one. So it's not even that big compared to, I'm gonna sit down. <laughs> Look how big it is. <laughs> so that is a Bold Illusion Syngonium. What's so cool about it is how huge the leaves can get. And they also are called like a mango syngonium because they get this mango color too. Y'all are great for sticking around during my, um, a lot of movement. <laughs> I appreciate that. I know it's hard to focus when I'm moving around a lot. Um, I'm still always told by how gorgeous. Thank you. I appreciate compliments, um, respectful ones. Check this out. I added this over here. Um, I'm trying to point on the screen. I'm so funny. This uh, Pilea and this Neon Pothos up here, these are little rings. They were actually um, cat food bowl holders. So Hilaricom, I said, you know, I love respectful compliments. So, um, you know, mm, yeah, that's what happens. So um, thank you. This is one of my cutesy begonias. I like it because it's so red. Thanks, Megan. I received my order on time. Hi, Papa D. Thanks for coming. Hi, Mama D. If you're here, check out some plants. I'm glad you got your order on time. That's always exciting. I'm going to be shipping a lot more out Monday. I have a ton of orders right now with this 20% off sale that I have running. If you guys didn't know, I have a 20% off sale going on. It's going on right now. <laughs> and it's pretty wild because I've never offered 20% off. And I finally got my shipping rates correct. So there are steals of deals on Megan'sPlantBoutique.com right now. So if you haven't been to my website, my Etsy website anyway, that's where most of my stuff is. It's plants. I sell plants, planters propagation kits, I sell growing mediums, I sell root cuttings, I sell um, pretty much things like this that you see here, and more. Um, my link is in my bio if you do want to see more of what's going on, uh, or what's for sale, actually, and available right now. I have a 20% off sale going on right now, so you'll see a lot of my plants are at heck of steal of deals. Um, I'm selling out of some stuff quick. Um, I have some enjoy pothos and some pearl and jade pothos propagating so as soon as i get roots on these babies they will be listed too um this is one of my driftwood propagators my husband is so good with woodworking and he was able to like excavate a little bit of this out here that way we could put some suckies in there so you see some rainbow elephant bush some succulents how cute huh so these are super unique. All plant people have plants, but they seem to never have enough planters. So if you get them something cool like this from the boutique that I have, then they're gonna appreciate you because this is something that nobody else has. So if you want somebody to remember you, then get them something unique from Megan's Plant Boutique. <laughs> so um, let me see. I wanna show you guys one more cool thing. Okay, so. I just got this set up. Oh, you guys see my ring light? Seeing the behind the scenes right now. So this one is a uh, philodendron in Brazil. Look how big and wild it's gotten. Oh no, not in the States. Yeah, I haven't figured out how to ship internationally yet. I'm still working on that. And then people love this big Dracinia that I have in here. You guys see my grow lights up here? <laughs> okay, so there are 23 of us left and I need to go and get my Saturday started. Um, I've got to pack some boxes for all the orders that rolled in last night. Gosh, you guys, keep, keep them coming. Um, I'm gonna be sold out if, <laughs> if you guys keep it up and that's what I wanna see. I will come back stronger and harder with more stuff if you guys out of stock me, that's for sure. Um, I'm Megan of Megan's Plant Boutique, and I'm out of here. I will see you all tomorrow at 8 a.m. I'm checking out. Check in with me tomorrow.